Hey, Panda. Hey, guys. Hey, Tom. Why the S word? <laughs> so we're going to have our own little FinTwit 21 party because I'm not there and I'm so upset. <sighs> booze. Why do you say booze? Why do you... <laughs> Are you drinking, Tom? I'm not always drinking, but I am. It's Saturday night. Give me a break. Hello, everybody. Where is everybody from? Pew, pew. Love it. This is the real Fintwit. The real Fintwit is in Orlando. <laughs> So, uh, just kind of giving it a few minutes. Oh, well, cheer. cheers, Tom, because <laughs> I am drinking. Phoenix, Texas, New York, Illinois, howdy, neighbor. From Dallas and Ohio, ooh, Washington, Virginia, Los Angeles. Puerto Rico, fancy, New York. I have never been most places. I would love to go to New York. Love to go to California. I'm going to be in California. I get, I don't know if it's California or Utah. I'm going to Lake Tahoe and I know it's like in two states. It can be in like two states, depending on where you're at. Calgary, cool. Every time I see Calgary, I think of the movie Cool Runnings. I don't know if anybody knows that. The Jamaican bobsled team. <laughs> cool. Okay, Um, I guess I wanted to... I asked what people wanted to learn about this week in a... Surprisingly, most people said day trading, which I guess kind of surprised me because I know I have a lot of videos on longer time frames, but if you're using the strat, and if you guys, you must, must, must watch the swing trading part two video, which talks about you know, using multiple time frame analysis. So even though I'm looking at the monthly and we're talking about signals on the weekly, you can just pretend that the monthly is the daily and the weekly is like a 60. So it's all relative. It all works the same. Um, and trading is, is very personal. You have to match your personality type. Uh, there is no like best time frame or I get asked that a lot. What's the best time frame to trade on? And there's just not a simple answer. It depends on you as a person. What kind of person are you? Do you like, you know, quick and fast? A lot of people don't. Are you more chill and laid back? You might prefer, you know, the 60 minute candles because they move a little bit slower. Um, some people like the daily, but so you have to determine what your favorite time frame is. I'm more of the quicker type person. I like the faster trades. Um, I am trying to incorporate more swing trading, uh, via options because I think that that's the best way to manage your risk. Uh, Oh, I just lost my train of thought. Manage risk. Um, well, because also in the event of a gap, like a huge gap down or bad news, money management. 
risk management. Live is fun. Uh, but yeah, so like in the event of a huge gap down or something, you know, you can only risk what you bought the option contract for. So I have been using options trying to swing. So, um, but I wanted to talk about what I look for in a day trade, how I find day trades, because you can't just, you know, wake up in the morning and be like, I'm going to trade whatever for no reason. You can't just be on a five minute time frame expecting to day trade. There is planning. You have to find a setup that you like. Um, inside bars are incredible. Uh, pivot machine guns are incredible. So, um, you don't, and I know you guys can't see the strat, uh, combo sheet right now. And I know there's a ton of different setups on there, but, uh, pick one, pick one that you really like, learn it and look for those and then find those. And then when you're doing your chart prep at night, find a setup that looks really good that you like and focus on that one in the morning. And I wanted to talk about AFRM because this was such a monster a couple of days ago and it was the perfect setup. Um, and I also wanted to go through the different time frames and show you there's not just one time frame that you can enter on. So we, we're kind of going to start from just the daily because this is more day trading related. So if you are day trading, you're going to start at the daily time frame, and you're going to kind of work your way down. So this is what we're going to do. So we're going to start with AFRM. Uh, it's always important to know the greater levels and like what your all time high is. So I have that marked. So the all time high, the previous all time high was 146.90. And then we must remember our psychological levels. So I also have marked 150. And I'm going to make this as big as I possibly can because my eyes are bad. So before any of these last three candles existed, this was our previous high, which is important to know. And let's get my line. So we know what the strat that we like broadening formations and we like to take out pivot lows. So looking at this chart, let's just pretend Let's just pretend that this is all there is right now, okay? So we had a low, we had an inside day, we had another inside day. So we had two inside days. So anyone who went long in these two days, expecting the stock to break up, so say it's like this. So say people got in long here, expecting it to break to the upside. They would have been stopped out on this day because they would have put their stop here because we made a, a low. So it looked like maybe our daily, you know, higher low was in. But we broke that low and made a new low. So you can look at this like this is the bottom of the broadening formation. So we have a low and then we made a lower low. We didn't take out this pivot low down here though, which that's okay. You don't always have to take out all the pivots. So then what happened? Then we had an inside day on 10.5, okay? And what else do we have? We have a pivot machine gun. And why do we have a pivot machine gun? We have a pivot machine gun because we have a series of at least five or more consecutive lower highs. So here's our inside day. I don't want, we're gonna make that white, okay? 
and then we have a pivot there. So we're going to make all of our pivots green because our pivots are our targets. There, 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 there. I should be counting. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have seven pew pews or seven bullets in this pivot machine gun. And I just refer to them as bullets, not because I'm a violent person, but because the the term that we use is a pivot machine gun, so it only makes sense to call them bullets. So you have all these pivots. So anybody who you know says, oh, AFRM is overextended and they're short. People who are short are going to have their stops at the highs of the, the day that they got in or you know any of these daily lower highs because it's just what people do. It's just human nature. So when they have shorts and they are wrong, they have to buy to cover, which adds buying pressure to the already upside movement of the natural buyers, so the natural bulls, okay? So then, so then what happened on 10-6? So we had a 212 reversal. So our inside day and up triggered on 106. There, we can make it a little bit bigger. And it took out every single pivot and it also tapped the top of the broadening formation, which is basically like an extra target. So, okay, so now we've got all of our levels marked, okay? So knowing the strat, knowing what a 212 setup, a uh, 212 reversal is, we know where our entry is, and I always tell people your stop should go opposite your trigger candle. And this came super close. Okay, so just for for reference, if you can't see these numbers, so the the trigger to go long is 114.64, and our stop is 109.07. Now, based on the strat, hey Otis. So based on the strat, we don't want to enter until the price is above 114.64. And why? Why don't we want to enter? until then because you could get just like this you could get another inside day so that that's why we have triggers so if this happens always forward thinking if this then that so if 114 triggers i'm gonna go long now there is obviously many different ways people can play this um you can and I don't talk about options too much because I feel like I do more of a risky thing. I buy my target strike, so I don't buy like at the money, I buy my target. But in this case, your target isn't exactly clearly defined because you don't know how far it's gonna go. So you could have bought, just say, you could have bought the 115 calls, you could have bought the 120 calls, you could have bought the 125 psychological. You could have bought the previous high of 133. So you could buy common. So that again, you know, reflects what kind of person you are and how you trade. Do you, you know, do you have a day trading account? Do you have over 25,000? Do you have under 25,000? If you have under 25,000, you're probably going to be playing options because you're not going to be able to afford many shares of a stock that's in, you know, the three digits. That's just how it is. Okay, so we have all of our daily levels marked. So let's go into the smaller time frames and just look 
you guys you really have to know the strat setups but we're going to look for how we could have gotten in when we could have gotten in and why so we're going to start at the five minute mark oh and also just to say i'm only going to be able to be on here for about an hour i have to pick my daughter up from work so we're still looking for a car for this child which horrifies me. Okay, so we know our white level. Oh, this is so easy looking back. It always is though, isn't it? Okay, so we know that the white label is our, the previous day's high of the inside day, and we know our red label is the previous day's low because we just did that. Okay, so right here, the second five minute candle of the day, we trigger the inside day and up. Super aggressive traders can enter on a break of this, or you can enter a starter position, which that's, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You don't know if it's going to, trigger and just blast or trigger and fall back so you can always start a small starter nobody knows what's going to happen when this level trips so like i said you can get in or if you're more cautious and careful you wait and you wait for a reversal to get in and if in non-strat talk you wait for a pullback to get in okay so we trigger, we go two up, we go two up in red, and then we go two down, two down, two down, two down. Okay, so now we have consecutive lower highs on the five minute time frame. So this is a perfect, we're gonna make this yellow and big so you guys can see it and I can see it. Let's go bigger. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so we have a two down and then this candle right here is our first reversal. It's our first two down, two up reversal. So what do you do? You enter when this candle opens and breaks the high of this candle. And you put your stop, like I always say, below your trigger candle. So this is the trigger candle. So if this candle opens and trips the high of the previous candle, that's our trigger candle. This would be called our entry candle. And I hope that makes sense but okay so then there's your entry there's your stop all right and then it go it just goes this thing pretty much took out every target within the first what hour and a half of the day Okay, so that is your way in. You know what your targets are. So, and on it, quite honestly, if, and I did not trade this name because I my trading has been so spotty lately. I've just not been doing a lot of it the past couple of weeks. But anyway, so I would have, this is a great, nice uptrend. Don't forget the simplicity of an uptrend, okay? Just, I mean, it's just pretty much straight up. So you could have exited. This was probably a 15 minute TTO, but we're gonna get to that. You could have exited when you got this big red candle if you wanted and waited for an entry to get back in long, only using the five minute time frame, which would have been right here. We had another two down and then a two up reversal right here. And then we took out another target. So then you could have just gotten out again when you hit your target. But 
let's go to the 15 minute time frame. The five minute time frame is not for everyone. It can be too fast for most people. This is beautiful. Okay. I'm not really paying attention to the comments. Sorry, I'll go back. Um, 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 um. Hold on, sorry, reading the comments. Yeah, and if you're a person that usually gets chewed up and spit out at the open, wait for the 15 minute setups. You don't have to get in at the open. It's very volatile. So just wait for a setup that you like. I personally really like the 15 minute candles. Okay, so now let's look at the 15 minute chart and see what happened, where we could have gotten in at, um, our entry and our stop. Obviously our targets are all the same because we got them from the daily. So the green lines you'll notice are not changing. Okay, beautiful. So the day opens way down here. This is the first 15 minute candle. So it's an outside bar with extended hours off. My extended hours are always off. <clears throat> Break. Tom, when I, when, I, when I refer to breakout traders, I mean entering, if you go to the daily, people are entering at our targets. So like somebody might consider uh, what's that level? 133. Say, I'm going to go long at 133. That would be a breakout. Like making new highs. Not an inside bar. So breakout meaning entering at extreme highs or extreme lows. Hope that makes sense. Okay, back to... <clears throat> the 15 minute chart. Okay, so the day opens. Boom, huge green 15 minute candle. Then the flip happens. We go two up, but they're selling the next 15 minutes. Two up in red is not a good thing. You're in conflict. We get another, oh, we get a two up, two down still selling on the next 15 minute candle. So right here is our very first two, two reversal. So a two down followed by a two up. So entry would be there at 114.89, which is only 20 cents um, above our daily trigger, but we've already had corrective activity. So if you were, to have gotten in at the open at the as soon as it triggered you would have probably been stopped out because it went up and then came back down to your trigger at 114.64 so this was the safer setup a two down two up reversal non-strat talk this is a bull flag where do you enter on a bull flag when the next candle breaks the high of the two down. So 114 entry, 112 stop. That's even better than, was it, than the five minute? What was the five minute? Probably not. No, the five minute had a dollar risk. The 15 minute had a $2 risk. For tons of reward. Like, this is amazing. So this is when you don't want to trade the open because you're going to get chewed up, spit out. Most people do. That's why I say wait for a 15-minute setup. And it was right here at exactly the daily entry. This is gorgeous. Okay. Now, and let's just look at the 15-minute chart for a second longer. You had two up, two up, two up, two up. 
I mean, look at all this. And the first two down that we got, oh no, that was a two up and then it became a three. So you could have just gotten out here and waited for another entry to see if it was gonna take out the 133 target. Or you could have just got out a move from 114. So this 15 minute chart, if you're playing the strat, this 15 minute chart would have had you in from 114.89 and you did not make a lower low on the 15 minute chart until 126. That is a $12 move. I mean, that's amazing. So don't be greedy. If you get a $12 move, take it. Get out when the chart tells you to get out. Okay, <clears throat> 30 minute. So we did the five, the 15, now we're doing the 30. Okay, me personally, I don't like three, two continuations. I just don't like them. I usually get tried out, so I don't, I don't love to take them, but you could have, and you could have entered when this 30 minute candle broke the high of the first for continuation. And it would have hit one, two, three, four, five, five targets. And even this candle, when we broke the previous candles low, it didn't go anywhere. So even if you had your stop a little bit lower, this, this two down that it tried to do, they weren't selling yet. It instantly ticked down and they started buying again. So then you got your outside bar. <clears throat> and that took out the 131 target. On the hourly, looking at the hourly, this was just buying the whole time. So where was the exit? This is a great example of where the exit was on the hourly. There really wasn't one until you hit your all your targets and your broadening formation target. You remember that blue line that we had, the top of the broadening formation? So let's, where's all the fun stickers? Okay, so on the hourly, Here's another 3-2 continuation that would have worked just perfectly. So the white line, we tripped our inside day and up. Then you had a 3, then you had a 3-2 continuation, so you would have entered right here. And then you had a, you had a whole bunch of consecutive higher lows and no reason to exit. So we had a 2 up, a 2 up, a 2 up, an inside bar, you could have added even you could have added when this candle broke the high of this candle with that being your target and then 133 being your target. <clears throat> so do you see how every candle is a high or low? So you had no reversal against you. So once you hit, once this big extension candle happened, that was a great, that was the perfect candle to exit on because it shows like exhaustion to the upside. We hit our top of our broadening formation. We took out eight pivots on the daily. This right there was the exit. And on the hourly, you had no reason to exit all day long until this candle because we hit, we're at exhaustion. We hit all of those pivots. We hit the top of the broadening formation. Then you had a flip. And then they started taking profit at the end of the day because there was nowhere else to go. Ooh, that was a lot of talking.
Um, mum, 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 mum. Yes, Otis, that is a breakout trader. They are entering at our exit, our exhaustion. I was being a bad boy and tried shorting this monster. That is your old technical analysis talking. It's extended. It's too extended. Let's see. Let's see what the RSI. Because I bet it was. Yep. So the RSI was at. Uh, I don't even know how to tell anymore. It was way up here at like 78. But it had hit our target. Well, that was only on the hourly. Let's go to the five minute. Oh, I bet people got wrecked trying to short this. So the RSI was up here at 87, only right here. So I guarantee a bunch of people went short right here because the five minute RSI is overextended. So I'm gonna do the opposite of what the RSI is actually telling me. The RSI is actually telling you that it's very effing strong not that it's too strong so a bunch of people went short here when the five minute rsi was in the close to the 90s and uh all that did was propel the price higher when everybody had to cover their shorts when we broke to a new high actually the rsi wasn't too high <clears throat> when we hit our target, which would be there now. It always moves on the five minute chart. I don't know why. Somebody, TMCL, BNK. I don't, you want me to review Tesla. Okay, so I guess that's what I wanted to show you. Um, and that's also why we always are telling people use more than one time frame have more than one time frame on your chart and like i said if you are day trading you want to know what color the daily is that is is number one that's going to give you your direction for the day if it's green you want to be long it seems like it's so stupid and so common sense but it is if it's green you want to be long if it's red you want to be short that only really changes when you get outside days but okay we're gonna remove all those drawings uh does anybody have any questions on how I went through the different setups, stops. Jacob, that is up to the trader. You can take all your profit at one target if you want. You can scale out, you can divide it into thirds, fifths. You can do whatever you want, but when it starts reversing, that's when I would, I would piece out of all of it. But again, on the hourly, you had no exit signal all day long. None. Um... Let me, I don't, hold on. I don't know if, ugh. Let me see something. I'm gonna try and get my strat combo sheet.
Okay. You should be able to see what's on my screen. I can see it, I think, on YouTube over on my other monitor. So this is everything. This is the Strat Combo Sheet. I don't think you can see my arrow when I hover over this image, though. So this is price action. So this is on any time frame. This is what we want to see happen. So, okay, so with the strat, there's one, twos, and threes. Twos are the most misinterpreted candle ever because people are seeing color and not direction. Twos are directional candles. And all that's really saying is, did it break the upside or the downside of the previous candle? So we call them by their direction. So we call them a two up or a two down. And two two reversals show a change in direction and usually a change in color. Um, so the two twos are the two bottom middle boxes. So you have a two in one direction followed by an, a two in another direction. And we don't know they're going to happen. That's why we have triggers. Stock hands, if you just joined, go back and watch the video later because that's what I spent the last 30 minutes talking about. Phantom Bob, I do not have option videos. Okay. Somebody wanted me to do Tesla and paid me to do it. Give me a little donation. He bought me a beer, which is kind of what I'm having people do because I cannot do 100 chart requests in a night. Tesla just looks tired to me. So <clears throat> this is the quarterly. So you had a 212 reversal when we broke above 780, 79, which, and your target is a new all time high. But the problem is, it's been like four months and you're still just trading at the trigger. So see the trigger was 780 and we're only now at 785. That's what I mean. Um, it's just tired. The buyers really just aren't stepping up here. Um, the only other thing that I would say is last week make this big for you last week you had a two up but it was red which me it just shows exhaustion so yes we made a new high compared to the previous week but we didn't go anywhere we kind of closed as like a doji kind of right in the middle so what you want to see i'm assuming you're a tesla bull because in my experience most people are bullish traders which is fine. You basically want to see exactly what you saw this week. So maybe next week you get a two down and then the following, oh, I ran out of space on my mouse pad. Hold on. So maybe next week you get a two down and then continuation to try and take out your all time high target. Yes, for PMGs, I look for at least five or more consecutive lower highs or higher lows, depending on if I'm short or long. Um, I 
Yeah, Trip. Trip. I'm watching Trip. We're a third of the way through the month, though, and we haven't triggered it yet. But. <clears throat> okay, so here's Trip monthly. So the trigger to trigger the pivot machine gun, you see, you have all these lower highs which means people have stops here, 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 here. Um, so the trigger is 37.60. And this is kind of exciting. We have an inside week. So next week, we have an inside week, which is great because that gives us a real low risk entry and stop. So you can enter early if you want. So we're, like I said, we're always forward thinking. So if we break the inside week to the upside, will that trigger the monthly pew pew? I can't, I can't say it with a straight face. So the entry, the early entry is 37.27. So domino effect. So if we can take out the monthly, can we then knock out or sorry, if we take out the weekly high, can we then take out the monthly high and trigger that? Another easy way of looking at pivot machine guns is just like, can you draw a downtrend line? Like, because I'll see people will like, we'll get a two up and people want to call it a pivot machine gun because there was five or more highs, but then something broke that pattern and they still want to call it a pivot machine gun, I don't consider that to be a pivot machine gun anymore. Um, somebody asked me, hold on. Like I have a good example of what I'm saying. It was on a DM. It was QS. So somebody called this a pivot machine gun which it was until this month because you had the all-time high up there. So you see this failed though, right? Because, okay, so that was all that we had on the chart. I got to get rid of this. Uh-uh. Okay, so this was all that existed. So we had all these lower highs, okay? And then this month opened. So the trigger was to be long above that with that being target one. Well, the month closed and it didn't even take out target one. And now this screwed up the whole pattern because now we don't have consecutive lower highs. Now it's shaping up for a 2-2 reversal to the downside which is a two up, and then if this candle, if this month we break the low of last month, that's the two two bearish reversal. And then your target would be this. But anyway, do you see how this candle last month negated the pivot machine gun? The setup was there, it just didn't do it. And CGC monthly is such a great example of why we don't buy the dip. How do you know when it stops dipping? <clears throat> and uh, I was saying somewhere around 16 or something that we were going to come and take out 1288 and we did do that this month we hit a low of 1286 so that sucks for those people if they were long since 1288 and didn't take any profit when we went all the way up into the 50s but hopefully nobody did that that would be very bad
Hey, Dan, or maybe Jason. Guys, the chart guys are here. <gasps> Aw. Okay. Anybody else have any general day trading questions? Hey, Jason. <laughs> now, I don't use TradingView uh, intraday. I use my broker because I don't like the way that these charts are all smush looking, but I do have multiple time frames set up on Thinkorswim. So. Panda, that's because you must not short. I love to short. I do not trade commodities. The script for anything that you see on here will is in my video descriptions. Um, Jason, do you have like a specific ticker that this happened to or a specific example? If it's lacking pizzazz, so we just went over AFRM because that was such a good example of what you want to see and why it took off and, uh, why it just blew through everything because it it was a pivot machine gun set up on the daily but uh i'm not going to go through that all over again but you can watch it'll it'll be recorded you can watch it but basically you want to put yourself in positions where you know it's going to work instantly because you know it's going to start just plowing through stops Okay. Love you. Thanks for watching. Um, what else? Wow, I think there's quite a delay. I need to figure that out. Downside gaps. Uh you know, the market does not like holes, but maybe, maybe it'll do, you know, maybe it wants to take out the all-time high first, which is not far away. Because once it does that, then who are you going to be long against if all the shorts are gone? So maybe, not saying it'll happen, but this is what we call exhaustion risk. So once you've made a new all-time high, Things don't tend to stay at all-time highs very long at all, like, like Roku. This was the most perfect monthly setup. I know this is supposed to be day trading, but things just don't stay at all-time highs. So that 486 was the Roku all-time high. So you see it, it made a new all-time high, and then it crapped. So maybe AFRM will do something like that first. Thank you, Relaxed Minds. I appreciate that. Is there anything you wanted me to look at for you? Um, 
As far as my watch list, guys, I I stick to my list. I mean, things get added and subtracted from it all the time. Like AFRM, that's a new ad, but I will remove something that's not really moving or that I haven't traded in a while. But all of these names are very liquid. I like high volume. Yeah, for real, if you want excellent option education, Alex, my little strat son, he knows his option stuff. There's tons of option videos on YouTube. I can't teach it all, so I stick to what I'm good at, stick to what I'm confident in teaching others, which is the strat. Thanks, Farzad and Julio. Um, okay, Julio, let's look at SDC for you. Do you have a time frame you want me to look at or just in general tell you, oof, tell you what I see? Oh, you've got a potential outside month. And why do I say that? Let's get out our fib retracement tool that I'm trying to make my strat friends cool with because they need to get over that. Okay, so we have that 50% rule. So once a candle has retraced more than 50% of the previous candle, so this is the monthly, because I always start at the monthly, then we can look for it to become an outside bar, which means we need to take out 742 in order for this candle to become an outside bar. What's an outside bar? One of these, where it takes out the previous candle's high and the previous candle's low, and like this one. Anything in pink is an outside bar, which this has only had two of them in its short life so far but it's working on its third. So now let's go down to the weekly. Oh, well shoot. So next week, if you can break this week's high, you're definitely gonna take out 742. So this is a long for sure. Oh, well thank you, Relaxed Minds. Thank you, Farzad. What, let's look at Facebook. What is Facebook doing right now? Oh, I went over this already on my last live. We knew it was going to take out 230 or 323. Because why? Because go to the monthly. So we had this big outside bar, which pretty much everybody had, the spies, the cues. Now the cues and spy tried to go two down, but they didn't. They're looking like they want to become back-to-back -back outside months. But Facebook, and I also, I said this on the spaces because everybody was just so worried about the market this week. And I was like, just make it real easy on yourself. If we're below last month's low, you wanna be looking short. If we're above last month's low, you wanna be looking long. And I feel like everybody was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. So we know target, target. This is strictly just using the monthly time frame. It hit our target of June's low. So, you have, again, kind of like the spy in the queues, you have a, a potential back-to-back -back outside months. So we've made new, new highs and new lows. So here's kind of your range. So next week, if you can break above uh, 
last week's high. You can go long, but you're want to you're gonna want to keep your tight stop stops tight. Why do we always do that? I see so many other people do that. Say the word backwards. Tights stop instead of stops tight. Because here's why. So if we break above last week's high, that's gonna be a two-two reversal, but it needs to stay above this here. You need it to stay above 338.84 so it doesn't just become some corrective activity like a TTO and then back down. So you want it to take out all these pivots because you kind of have, well, you do have the makings and the beginnings of a weekly pivot machine gun now because you got all these lower highs. So yeah, it's a good long, just keep your, your, your stop tight. Thanks, Clark. Going live is something very new to me. Rocco, he's dreaming, he's sleeping. This is only my fourth live, I think. And once you understand this stuff, I mean, I have a trend spider scanner, but for people who are new, you, you probably want it, but I can just go, go down this. I can just go down my ticker list and be like, yes or no. So Apple, you would go long over last week's high. Airbnb, long over last week's high. It's a rep strat. We already, we've been talking about AFRM all day. AMC, this is an either way. Because you actually have a tightening range. So if you wanted to trade it, it can go either way. It can continue to tighten, meaning it could go like this. You could go up and then down or you could go down and then up so this one you could take either way apps looks like it tried to take out its high i don't know if it's going to keep going arc i wouldn't touch it it's stuck in the middle of a broadening formation atvi oof See, I wouldn't want to go along this name until we took out that pivot low, which we came really close, but we didn't quite do it. We came within like a dollar seventy. But I want everybody to get stopped out before I look to go long on a reversal. Which, judging by the looks of it, it looks like we're gonna go and take that 70 out because two weeks ago we had a two up that didn't go anywhere, so the bulls choked. Then you have an inside week. So next week, if we break, we're going to take out the 72 and the 70. But yeah, I'm not going to go through all these. But once you get good and fast, you'll see them. Okay, I have to get off. But I'm so bummed I am not at the FinTwit 2021 conference but I'll go next year <sighs> she'll be all right Otis <laughs> okay all right well I hope that helped to answer your day tra day trading questions what time frame to use there is not really an answer it's whatever you want to use whatever you're comfortable using just wait for a reversal so all right guys till next time see you later thanks for hanging out
Appreciate you.